Blake, what's going on, brother? Just uh, getting ready for this game tomorrow night. My dad is a Baylor alum, so he was a huge okay. Kim Mulkey fan. Still is to a certain extent because of the success she had in Waco. So I enjoyed you talking about her earlier. And Ed, she's a she's a spitfire, man. And that's putting it lightly, I think. <laughs> oh, dude, she 1,000% is a spitfire. And, and look, Ty, I think she got snubbed for Coach of the Year, quite honestly. Uh, but look, I, I I I come off as biased when I say that, and, and look, I get it. But she is a spitfire, and look, she's from my hometown or close to my hometown. The mm -hmm. women all act the same. Look, my wife's right there. We're on vacation time. <laughs> they all act the same. It's in the water. I I mean, that's all I can say. You know what? Give credit to your wife though, because like you said, you're in Fort Walton Beach, and I initially was I thought that was a joke or something that you maybe play with your listeners, but we have the technology now. You here and us at the radio station where we can pretty much broadcast wherever thanks to again Beautiful. tech it's nice to be able to do that for example i'm flying out to tampa on monday and i will be there all week for the sec tournament even though arkansas does not play till friday gotta stay with a buddy that blake he lives 0.8 miles not even a mile from the arena nice. so i got lucky with that one you did get lucky. See, why do you always get the great deals, Ty? Is it because you have great hair? It's, it's uh, hair's not looking good right now, dude. So I'm in a stage where it's like it's not long enough. I get it. I, I know we haven't known each other that long, but I get haircut once every seven months. And that's probably very odd to someone as professional as yourself. But <laughs> I'm, in a, I'm in a stage where I don't have a wife or a kid or right. a – professional job it's just sports radio that's not really professional so i can kind of goof off and i have the title of the young and dumb and we know the rest of that phrase but i'm not going to utter it on these airwaves uh at, at, at where i'm at so it's just you kind of got to lean into it a little bit i feel you well you, look you talked about going to the sec tournament uh next week so let's let's talk about arkansas and lsu look will wade and lsu basketball is either hot and cold eric musselman kind of a slower start this season but Eric, quite honestly, ever since he had surgery, it looked like the team, or Ty, ever since Eric went down, it, it would seem as if the, the team got a little bit more focused. And quite honestly, I think that you could make the debate that Arkansas might be playing as one of the best teams in the country. What do you think uh, about your Razorbacks and how they're playing right now? Musselman and company get the win against Missouri, and they clobbered them, beat them by like 40. Right. And then – LSU happens the day after Musk makes it official. That he's getting the surgery. Key smart. They just got their first SEC win of the season. And you're like, oh no, they're going to Baton Rouge. LSU's been playing well. 16th team in the country. Here we go. Eight, eight points down. Six minutes left in the game. Game's over. No, it's not. They come back and win. Keith Smart's going nuts in the locker room. They're pumped. And then Baton Rouge made it, by the way. It, oh, yeah. That's right. He was he grew up very close. To the mm -hmm. PMAC. I remember him discussing that. So that was a pivotal game for Arkansas. And now the team's roles have kind of reversed in a sense. You look at where LSU was and the, where they are now and there where Arkansas was, where they are now. They won 13 or 14. The only loss they've had in this stretch was a one-point loss in Tuscaloosa, Alabama. This is not going to be an easy game for Arkansas. Xavier Pinson did not play in that first game. I know you probably talked pretty extensively about that. Yep. He is the gas that makes that team go. Uh, I'm pin and I almost said, uh, you're I'm blanking on the game. Like six oh, eight. Who's who? Am, who am I playing? Is it Tari Johnson? Is that Tari Eason? Yeah, Tari Eason. Eason. Yeah, yeah right, that right. that kid can absolutely play. He can shoot it. He can get to the rack. He can post up. I know he's probably their best player, but Pinson seems like the guy that kind of gets everything. Going so Arkansas and Must have been saying all week, but he didn't really play LSU last time. One, I wasn't coaching, two pints and one there. So it's going to be a battle to the very end, as it has sometimes been in Fayetteville, Arkansas, when you play the Tigers tomorrow night. Right. And I didn't properly introduce you. We've been at the beach all way, but Ty Richardson from Hit That Line AR, go follow him on Twitter at Ty Sports Radio. Uh, we'll let him tell you everything that he's doing too. I listen to him every morning. Ty, I got to be honest, I, I'd be throwing some jabs in there to some of the listeners who'd be disagreeing with you. I just got to throw that in there. But <laughs> yeah, like, even, I, even I a host every once in a while, right? <laughs> I know you're talking – because I, for those who don't know, um, I do a show with a high school and a college referee, so whenever there's a rules debate, I – Again, I, I like to egg them on a little bit every once in a while, and it's the listeners usually take my side when it comes at least that 
that fact oh, of the conversation. It, I hopped in there and it was that debate and it was going, it was nuts. It was a frenzy. Yeah. And, I, and I, look, look, I love a good debate. It's very, especially a high spirited one. But you talked about the game and, and look, Ty, I keep, I've been talking about this for a week and a half and I, I'm kind of joking. I'm kind of not, but I do not like going to Bud Walton Arena. I, like I, as a fan, I, I hate it because look, I, I feel like it's going to be a little bit electric there tomorrow too and look you got fans in the stands mooning people the mm-hmm. building's absolutely going crazy do you think that because this game is at home that it gives more of arkansas the edge even if you might have the same amount of talent on both sides oh yeah bud Walton arena is the best arena in the sec and i'll here here's an easy easy pathway for me to your listeners Baton Rouge, Louisiana on a Saturday night, or just a Saturday for that matter in fall, is the best atmosphere at all of college football. Most of you right. know that, that are listening. I know that. I haven't been to a game. I got a diehard buddy that lives in Baton Rouge, Blake, that I was telling you about. He texted us after his first Saturday night game. He goes, guys, I love Fayetteville, Arkansas. I love Donald W. Reynolds Racing Back Stadium. Doesn't hold a candle to Baton Rouge <laughs> on a Saturday night. That right. being said, the PMAC, get, PMAC gets loud. It gets hostile. It ain't Bud Walton Arena on a Saturday. Right. It ain't Bud Walton Arena on a Wednesday night. And you brought it up. This is already – it's not – it goes football rivalry for Arkansas fans, then baseball, because Arkansas fans hate LSU baseball. Maneri and Burtman just used to kick the crap out of Arkansas. Mm-hmm. Now it's on a little more even playing field. Arkansas has gotten a little more of it lately at home in Alex Box this past season. Basketball still – a good rivalry. Nolan Richardson, Dale Brown, Shaquille O'Neal, Oliver Miller. There are some key moments and probably the most memorable that has the biggest connection. 2015, I remember that. Keith Hornsby, Eric Musselman diagrams that play while he's on Johnny <laughs> Jones's staff. Yep. Hornsby sinks it over Michael Qualls. <laughs> Game over. There's been some fun games in Fayetteville. And, dude, that atmosphere, senior night, Arkansas LSU. It's going to be electric, Blake. Don't, you know, anytime someone brings up my good friend Keith Hornsby, Mr. AKA White Chocolate, I absolutely love it. So I, I got to throw out to <laughs> a shout out to my good, my good buddy Keith Hornsby. We do have some questions firing in here, Ty. And one from Ant Marshall, he says, hashtag ask Ty, how far does Arkansas have to go this season for it to be considered a success? Look, I, Ty, I think that they've done much more than I thought that they would do, even though they were ranked inside the top 20. But how far do they need to go in this tournament to, consider it that uh, a success this season? I think Sweet 16. I said Sweet 16 initially based on the talent that I saw on the roster. Now we've seen that talent come together and just play rock-solid defense, 13 to last. And even in that Alabama loss, they played pretty good defense. I want to see what the matchups look like. And I think Arkansas has a chance to make it back to another Elite Eight. I'm a little skeptical at this point to say Final Mm -hmm. Four, see what they do tomorrow night against LSU, Saturday in Knoxville in Tampa next weekend. But this team, the way they play defense, it can always keep them in games. And if J.D. Note plays at the level he's been playing at the elitist of competition, this is going to be a tough out. So my opinion, Blake, it's sweet 16, but I'm sure a lot of those guys in the locker room have bigger and and larger aspirations. Do you think Eric Musselman has done something for Arkansas basketball that we haven't seen in a while? Quite honestly, for me, as, a, as, a, as an SEC fan from the outside looking in, it feels like there's just a different buzz with Musk there. Now, we had him here in Baton Rouge, and you always knew that, but, Ty, it, it feels different. Yeah, was, y'all should have let go of Johnny Jones and hired him. I mean, what were y'all doing, you know? <laughs> we were just yeah. getting investig- investigated by the FBI. No yeah, <laughs> it, it seems like that, that that happens every once in a while. Yeah, Mus is uh, – Greenberg – Said it, I think this morning on SEC this morning, they calls him a mad scientist. This is a guy that's taking off his shirt, interacting with students, doing all these crazy things, having his shoe designs every single game. He He's kind of started a trend with the polo and the slacks. He just does things differently. And his family, him, Danielle, Mariah, um, Michael is his son on staff, and then Matthew is in college who came back for the Kentucky game. They just really seem to enjoy Fayetteville, and they are Fayetteville royalty there. The energy is palpable. The buzz is there. You can feel it, especially at home games. What's wild to me is Kentucky, Auburn, 
Tennessee and Arkansas are combined 63 and one at home this season. Yeah. The one loss comes to Vanderbilt earlier this year, which is still inexplicable and inexcusable if you're Arkansas and how they play, how that played out with Scotty Pippen Jr. and his dad just just destroying you that night at home. <laughs> well, LSU's had that same problem with Vanderbilt and Scotty Pippen Jr., but I, I, I digress uh, uh, there. Ty, I do want I, I, as we pregame that I, I want to give you get your prediction. Uh, about this game, but I, you know what? Well, we could do that here. How do you see it playing out? I, I still think Arkansas is going to win until I see something different from Will Wade and this team. I, I can't pick against Arkansas. Um, I, I think Ty could, could could get a little bit ugly, and I hate to say that, but you know, I think it could be a 10 to 15 point win for Arkansas. That's where I'm leaning at the current moment. What about you? What I appreciated about the Auburn and Kentucky games is not only did Arkansas win, but they were incredible basketball games. The Auburn mm-hmm. game goes to OT. We had it play out as it did. Kentucky game, it's close to the final moments. Incredible basketball game. Back and forth, multiple lean changes, multiple ties. But LSU's running into a buzzsaw tomorrow night. Five guys are going to be honored on senior night. A lot of these guys want to be able to show out. J.D. Note and Audis Tony still have an opportunity to come back next year. They're probably going to explore, at least look into that after the season is done. I don't know, Blake, if you'll have 19,200 Razorback fans in attendance, but it's going to be close to a sellout. And you know as well as I do, Bud Walton Arena is already a tough place to play. But on the last home game of the season – Good luck, Will Wade, because you're going to need it tomorrow night. I, I completely agree there. And that's t- – Ty, if they were playing in Baton Rouge, I think it would be close. Oh, yeah, that's, 100%. No question. Seriously, the playing in Bud Walton's given me 8 to 10 points. Like, going to bet online right now, placing the bet. Shout out to bet online. Um, Ty, I do want to kick it around to some other things in Arkansas, too. Arkansas baseball is starting off a little bit slow, but they kind of hit a little bit of a rhythm. Uh, look, it's early in the season. I, I tell LSU baseball fans I don't overreact to to baseball at least at least into the first weekend, second weekend in April. Um, but it, it's a little strange to see a team like Arkansas st- struggling a little bit early. From what you've seen, what what do you think's going on there? Well, I'll just look at the defending national champion Mississippi State, who dropped what two of the three at home and the Long Beach like, State. Yeah, who's a I think a pretty quality baseball team. I'm just going to be completely honest with you and your listeners. I never played baseball growing up. I had the luxury to do a radio show with the voice of Razorback Baseball, Phil Elson, for an entire year. So I picked up some knowledge and picked up some bits and pieces. I am not by no means the baseball expert on our radio station. But I will tell you is this. I think that the people that have watched this team, they know that the conditions are not helping Arkansas. And what I'm talking about that, the wind, the cold, this is a team that was power hitters last year. And you can't really do that in this weather right now. So they like against Stanford, they had bases loaded, didn't get anything out of it. They lose five zero. They lose the home opener to Illinois state. Dave Van Hort has never lost a home opener. So people were kind of freaking out a little bit. Mm -hmm. And I think it was not necessarily validated, but I understand why fans were like, this is the number two team on D1 baseball. What's going on? And then you had, again, you got two of the three this last week. And SEC play, there's some big time teams coming to town. I mean, LSU's coming to town. Right. Vanderbilt's coming to town. Ole Miss is coming to town. Baumwalker Stadium. We're talking about Bud Walton a little bit on this show. Baumwalker Stadium, if you're listening to this program right now, I had the luxury of going to Alex Box for the first time. And it wasn't the height of Alex Box. Team wasn't any good last year. Maneri was out the door, everything that happened. But for me, getting to go to two games, incredible. Just a historical right. venue to see the numbers, to see the baseball. It was awesome. And I'm going to be honest, like I, I like Baton Rouge better than I do New Orleans. I've only been in Baton Rouge <laughs> once, and I like it better than New Orleans. That's probably a hot take. Been to oh, both of them. Oh, oh, dude, don't check your DMs for the next two days. That's all I'm going to tell you. <laughs> I like Baton Rouge better than New Orleans. I'm just being honest, man. I, I feel you. I, I'm not going to disagree with you. Believe me, I'm not going to disagree with you. Ty, let, let me let me ask you this. I want to get to a football question before we get you out of here, too. In a in a de- in a celebrity death match <laughs> between Dave Van Horn and Tony Vitello, who are you taking? Well, Vitello's got the age, but... My two co-hosts always tell me about old man strength, which is a thing. <laughs> so I think I'd be – you're talking about 
my DMs getting blown up for the take I just had about Baton Rouge and New Orleans. I think they would also be blown up if I said Tony Vitello would win that battle and win that fight. So I'm going to take Dave Van Horn. That conversation, and I say conversation in the most mild way possible because that was anything but a yarn conversation. It was just a yelling match. Was awesome. Like baseball, I feel like the MLB has more of that. You rarely see those type of things in college baseball. Right. At least I don't. Maybe you do. So to have that little umph with that, and I think Tennessee comes to, I think Tennessee comes to Fayetteville too this year. I got to double think, check on I that. I think they do too. I think it's so, like the same last weekend. That's gonna be fun. Tony's gonna have a little little fun reception, a little background on Tony Vitello. Uh, I was at in that Italian whatever. Vitello. He was an assistant for Dave Van Horn right. under our, at Arkansas. Incredible recruiter, really quality baseball mind. Did you know about Tennessee baseball before he got there? Because I didn't. I can't name you one quality player. And again, I don't have this massive baseball knowledge, but that's that is a fun little umph. And DVH, you probably saw those comments. I felt like those were directed towards Ole Miss and Alabama, but people I thought they might have been Vanderbilt and Tennessee too. So it's just it's fun. A little back and forth. Baseball needs it. MLB with everything going on right now, the baseball, the sport needs more news. And DBH and Vitello, or he goes out another coach, or there's a little more, little little piss fire between some coaches. I'm all for it because college baseball needs to suck up the news and the and the the ratings and the watches because right. MLB is not doing it right now with man for good grief. I, I look, we have the Rafino's rants, how we kick off a lot of shows. And I agree with you there. And look, that that sells the sport. It, Ty, it's easy marketing. You know, and even get into Brian Kelly, the whole dancing thing. People are making fun of him, but all college recruits are talking about Brian Kelly trying to do the the gritty. You know, I mean, it, it's yeah. small it's small stuff like that, even though it might be silly to some. Yeah, but everybody's talking about it. But I speaking of football and transition, and you know, in our business, we call that a transition. Look, <laughs> I, I love the, the best O-line coach in – the SEC, and I'm extremely biased because he went to Southeastern. It's Cody Kennedy, but I but I digress there. The Arkansas O line coach, shout out to to Cody Kennedy. Sam Pittman's doing something there that I think is a little bit interesting. They were on the cusp of beating Alabama a season ago. They've been on the cusp of doing some really good things, but now they get in some pieces. They got some players returning. When you look into this football team and Sam Pittman, where do you where do you uh, see them going into next season? Can they get to those double digit wins? 10 wins is asking a lot with the toughest schedule for the third straight season in college football. And this schedule this year is tougher than the previous two. Two years ago, you had 10 SEC games. You got Florida and Georgia in that right. season, which we know Florida went on, went on to win the SEC or get to the SEC championship, won the SEC East. Last year, you still had to go to Athens, went on that trip. Unbelievable. Athens is still a peg below for me than Baton Rouge. I'm telling you, man, Baton Rouge, that weekend was incredible. I've got to go back at some point. I want to go. We're going to Auburn this year, which I'm really excited about. Let me roll through the schedule. Also really fun and also really loud, too, by the okay. way. Jordan Hare, I'm excited Jordan about Hare's, it. Jordan Hare is very sneaky. So, if, they're good, if they're good, Ty, it starts shaking in there, and then you see this big-ass – Eight foot eagle flying over your head. It get it gets a little scary, bro. A little scary. Well, they're gonna be trash this year, so I'm not worried about that. All right, first <laughs> first game of the season, they open up against Cincinnati, who will be ranked. No Desmond Ritter, but that they're still gonna have a good football team under Luke Fickle. Right. Second week of the season, they get Spencer Rattler in South Carolina, which was thought to be a cupcake game. Oh, Shane nice. Beamer, yeah, he's doing stuff good. All of a sudden. He comes over, that other tight end for Stogner or whatever his name is, comes over from Oklahoma. They actually all of a sudden have a team that they think they compete for the East. Third week, Bobby Petrino comes to town in Missouri State. Fourth right. week, go to College Station and take on the – or to Jerry World, take on the number one recruiting class and a Texas A&M team that thinks they can win the SEC West this year. And then the fifth game – Oh, you just have to welcome in Bryce Young, the Heisman Trophy winner, and Alabama, Nick Saban. Oh, he's not retired yet. He's still trying to win a national championship. They got clobbered in the national championship for their standards. I know it wasn't the Clem Clemson clobbering, but for their standards, that was a terrible season. So what are they going to be on? A revenge tour. You think they're going to be nice to Arkansas when they come to Fayetteville after beating them only by seven? I don't think so. So this schedule, man, is brutal. 
10 wins, like that's asking a lot. If they get to eight or nine, I think a lot of Arkansas fans should be happy. Uh, I I agree with that. And look, if they get to eight or nine, Ty, if they do get to nine, I think you're talking about Sam Pittman in the running for a coach of the year. I, and, I, and I'm serious with that. And so, look, we'll see. I think that they're still doing some good things. Keeping Kendall Browse is absolutely massive. Uh, so we'll see it there. Ty, one more. We do have a question for you uh, from Rick. He says, hashtag ask Ty, is it just me or do the officials at AU and Auburn add three points <laughs> at home in football? Woo! Don't ask an Arkansas fan about what happened in Auburn, Alabama when they played <laughs> Bo Nix two years ago. Holy cow. Yeah, the Alabama – Alabama, I feel, is just so – dominant in so many areas that even the slightest miscall call or non-call gives them such a superior advantage that you point that out. But for whatever reason, the Auburn Tigers have been given the benefit of the doubt, even against Alabama. Right. It just, it makes no sense. And we always joke about, ah, the SEC offices are in Birmingham. There's too many people that are Auburn alums, Bama alums that work in that office that have impact, that have just a variety of things that they control or whatever. And this is, again, we're tossing out conspiracies, play the (laughs) X-Files music, whatever. But yeah, Rick, that drives me insane. You're right in line with every Arkansas fan when the idea comes about that Auburn and Alabama, they might get a call or two out there. I think that they always do. But you know what? I mean, Patrick Peterson did intercept that ball. He was not out of bounds. But, you know, hey. It happens every time we play Alabama, but but we'll see. Todd, look, man, you've been absolutely fantastic. I greatly appreciate you joining the show. Uh, tell everybody where they can catch you, and, and I know you're on in the mornings, but tell them where they can find you and all your great stuff that you guys are doing. Thanks, Blake. Yeah, so you can follow us on Hit That Line AR, our Twitter, or our Facebook. We broadcast, I'm a co-host of the Morning Rush with Tommy Kraft weekdays from 6 to 9 a.m. across the ESPN Arkansas airwaves and Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and Twitch is where you can watch it. We don't just talk Arkansas. We talk SEC football. We talk SEC basketball, SEC baseball. It's very similar to LSU sports radio content like you have, Blake. It's a lot of your team and a bunch of SEC because we know what butters our bread here in, in this state and your state too, boss. Absolutely. Man, you've been fantastic. Thank you again, and and we'll talk again soon for sure. Blake, appreciate it, man. Enjoy some of the beach, dude. You're on vacation, brother. I, we are, but see, today's our last day, or we're leaving tomorrow. We were at the beach all day long, but, you know, look, man, the bill, you know, the bills don't sleep, Big Daddy. You know, you, you, know. you, you still got to pay the bills. And, look, I, I was off a little bit last week, and so I got to make it back up. But, again, you know, Got to do it, brother. But I appreciate you for your time, man. We'll talk soon. Let's have a good game tomorrow night. Later, everybody. Later. That's our good friend Ty Richardson. Man, I just love him, bro. Just good, great quality.